Welcome to Jung Tuition. Today, I'm going to discuss an obscure and troublesome issues in studying electricity and chemistry or electrochemistry for short. I noticed this issue uh, many years ago when I bought this uh, textbook called the Chemistry and uh, a Modern Introduction that uh, the author denote the negative electrodes of the galvanic cells as anode. Okay. Now, I notice that still today, people still have trouble arising from the, the, the same uh, 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 reason. For example, this is an ordinary battery, which got two electrodes. One is a positive electrode, another is a negative electrode. Now tell me, which electrode shall we call anode? The positive one or negative one? I'm sure depending on whether you have uh, studied chemistry or not, the answer might be opposite. Now, in this short video, I'm going to investigate this uh, historical uh, nuisance. And uh, eventually, we will work out how to actually abolish this uh, stupid chemical naming system. First of all, it is important for us to get familiar with the definition of electrodes in physics. In this diagram, we can see a cathode ray tube or vacuum, vacuum tube, which was originally used by G.G. Thompson in 1897, in which he observed that some strange ray uh, emitted from the cathode, namely the negative electrode. And uh, eventually he discovered this unknown, unfamiliar with so-called cathode ray is actually made of many tiny negative charged particles, now known as electrons. So that is an important breakthrough in the history of, hist of, of physics as well as in chemistry. But just remember this, electron come out of the cathode. That is all about cathode ray. However, if you go to any chemistry textbook, such as this cartoon I cited from uh, a website, you will notice that the electrode which give the electrons is actually called anode instead of cathode. So how does this happen? Well, if you ask any students or even uh, teachers, they will just uh, I tell you that now it's just a convention. And uh, we call the electrode anode if oxidation occur at this site. So that is their uh, explanation. It's not explanation, it's just, uh, just uh, the kind of the argument. Do you know why? Because prior to the discovery of electrons, electricity is uh, a trivial issues in chemistry studies. So ion is, uh, is the most people concern. The ion, both negative and positive, are, very, are, not, are, are observed and uh, has been uh, investigated before uh, 1897. So therefore, in those days, you can imagine that they make their decision or they name in this electrode based on the phenomena that in this oxidation, zinc becomes zinc ion, which is a positive ion, it's called a cation, and then the negative electron. Because electron is, is trivial in terms of their mass, 
And so therefore, uh, that is why people uh, choose, decided to name these electrodes as anode, because after all, the zinc ion, positive zinc ion is leaving this electrode. See? So it's just focus on the, the ion, the heavier particles. The zinc is leaving to this electrode. Hence, this electrode is not zinc ions home. So therefore, they must be anode. Of course, <laughs> the trouble appears once people discover that the electricity is nothing but is a moving electrons. And uh, therefore, if you just interpret, you just look at this chemical reaction, you can alternatively say the not only uh, does the zinc uh, ion leave this electrode, so do the electrons, you see. So depending on how, which perspective you use. So that's why in physics, we decide, we, did, we define that this terminal, this uh, electrode as cathode, because that is a, this is a source of electron. Electron are also leaving this electrode. Hence, it must be canceled. Of course, uh, people with chemistry background probably not feel very <laughs> good about it because basically I'm talking about many online tutors in chemistry are actually talking about nonsense. Then in order to convince that uh, my observation is my investigation is based on the, uh, the uh, solid, uh, research. Let's look at this table I prepare for you. In this table, I have selected basic uh, uh, particles and uh, the and and the electrodes uh, uh, relevant to our study. But the definition, two definition, two type of definition are listed side by side. One is definition in physics, another is definition in chemistry. Okay. Let's do it one by one. Atom. In physics, we know that atom is made by a nucleus and electrons. But in chemistry, it took people a long time to, they feel really reluctant to accept the name atom for some peculiar reason. They still insist that the periodic table is a periodic table of elements, not a periodic table of atoms. So you can, in the modern textbook, you barely notice a very important terminology called atoms. Electron, of course, by definition, it is a negative particle. And uh, furthermore, it is a electric charge element. And uh, cathode is just a beam of electrons. Because this is a purely discovery in physics, so therefore uh, chemists have nothing to say, but just borrow this idea of electron and including the, the property of the quantum mechanics. Uh, however, because as I said, uh, ions had been uh, invest observed and investigated before the discovery of electron. So therefore the naming based on the chemical naming system and the positive ion and the negative ion had their proper name. To be specific, the, the negative ion is called anion, anion. Positive ion is called cation, see? So electrically positive is called cation. Of course, in the, in the, oh, by the way, an ion had used to be considered as kind of the non Dalton's element because the Dalton's chemical element uh, is, is focused on the, the, the element with the proper mass. And, uh, and, and therefore, and uh, the, they have nothing to do with electric charge. So when, when ion was involved in a, in, a, in a study in chemistry, people in those days were uh, in, uh, speculated that perhaps there also there is certain uh, a type of elements. 
similar to atom exist uh, uh, when, uh, when we study chemistry. So that is why they treat the electricity as kind of the of element, a makeup beyond the atom. This is all right. You can, you can basically, you can call the positive ion or negative ion by any name. You can use a muon or pion or even the Higgs particle if nobody had used that uh, terminology before. But the trouble appears. If you put this uh, ion in the, in the context of electrochemistry, you will immediately notice that there are some inconsistency they cannot overcome. So for example, the positive electrode is called anode and the negative electrode is called the cathode. And the explanation, well, according to the old fashioned uh, interpretation is that because anode must be the home of ion and cathode must be the home at the cations. I will explain to, to you this, uh, this, uh, this uh, uh, explanation in detail. So basically that is a uh, non-electron that is a naming uh, before the discovery of electron. How about electricity? Nowadays, we know that uh, electricity is purely determined by the uh, basic interaction called the Coulomb's interactions. Namely, the same charge will repulse and opposite charge will attract, will attract to each other. But in the absence of this, uh, this uh, modern uh, vision of electricity, modern description of the electricity, chemist had their own interpretation. They simply treat, describe the phenomena observed in, the, in, this, uh, uh, in this setup as a kind of iron spontaneously go home, go their home without invoke Coulomb's law. Why? In this diagram, you can see that the ion which is, uh, although it is negatively charged, but their home, according to their family name, they belong to the family called anode. So therefore, after a while, play outside when they're getting hungry, they return home. And so does the cation. Cation, uh, although it has positively uh, charged, but because the cat is the uh, same had the same initial of the cathode. So therefore the cation must return eventually to their home. So that is the, what kind of, this is a phenomenological explanation of this uh, electrochemical phenomena. And actually I just make sure, make, uh, uh, point out, I would like to point out, it's pretty uh, common, it's common sense to, to, to accept this kind of the go home theory, because after all, home is where we, are, we, are, we, we deserve to return. You remember the melody by uh, Dorothy? Yes, go home in theory is very popular, very convincing, very persuasive because they just let people uh, associate their common sense to understand something abstract. Actually, this happened in the history of physics and chemistry several times. For example, when we're talking about uh, the, we're dealing with uh, the free fall, and uh, that would be the explanation before Galileo. So we see in this diagram, you see that everything fall from the sky, the water drops, uh, the apple, the cannons. Why? Well, you don't need to know why, you just follow this go home theory. Things fall down because the ground is their home. Sounds good except the one whose name is called Isaac Newton. No. 
And he, because he, can, he could think independently, that is why he could first discover the universal gravitational law. Okay. Well, if you dig out the history of chemistry, you might find similar claim based on this go home theory that in this, in the diagram we just saw, after all, ions go to anode because of anode is their home. On the other hand, cation go to cathode because cathode is their home. Sounds good, but it's terribly wrong. See that? Is it wrong? So that is uh, what we call the historical uh, troublesome issues ex which has existed uh, over a century, see? And uh, the chemistry teachers keep teaching their students generation by generation. I think it's a little bit uh, silly to keep this old uh, tradition. Therefore, I strongly recommend that this table together with this diagram be adopted in any textbook of modern chemistry so that those chemistry teacher and tutors would have no chance to waste their students' time and their life. Keep watching my channel. Next time, I'm going to talk about something very interesting. Bye now.